seems like I work a lot with vegetables on the program and I don't spend enough time with fruits, particularly not making desserts. So today that's what we're actually going to do. I'm going to do a plum cobbler. Now keep in mind that if you have other types of fruits, you could easily substitute peaches or nectarines in this recipe as well. So it doesn't have to be plums, but plums are a wonderful fruit to work with. And with many of the plums we have here in Oklahoma that grow wild, you could also substitute those. If your plums are a little bit tart, you may need to add more uh, sugar, but um, you can pretty much use any of the, the tree fruits that would be available. I've got about four cups of fresh plums, and to that I'm adding about a half a cup of brown sugar. Now again, if your fruit is extremely sweet, you could add less. These are really nice and ripe. You can see there are different colors here, and that kind of adds to it as well. Although they're going to cook up and make this, because of the, the nice red color in these, they're going to be beautiful red uh, and juicy when they get done. Stir those together. You could actually do this in the casserole dish if you didn't want to get another uh, dish dirty. And just spread those out a little bit. The topping is also very, very easy to do uh, in that we're just going to start with one cup of flour and a half a cup of granulated sugar, another half of a cup of brown sugar, half a teaspoon of salt, about a half a teaspoon of um, cinnamon, and stir those together just a little bit. Cobblers are really interesting because they mean different things to different people. The original word basically meant just put things together, whatever you had on hand, and turn it into a dish. And so that's basically why so many people have a different idea when you say cobbler. Some people think of something with just a crust on the top. It's basically a pie crust. Some people think it has a crust on the top and the bottom, but it's not in a pie pan. Some people think it's uh, more like this, where it's, it's uh, crumble, crumbly on the top, so that there's a lot of ra different range of concepts. This is one beaten egg, and you're just going to stir this together until it gets crumbly. And that's going to go on top of the plums that we have in the pan there. Now, if you chose, you could reduce the amount of sugar by about a third, depending on how sweet your plums are. We're also going to put on top of this half of a cup of melted butter or margarine. And that you could also decrease by about a third. Once that gets kind of crumbly and mixed together well, just put it on the top, spread it around. And while you're doing this, you can have your oven preheating to 350 degrees. This is the butter that I've got melted. And it doesn't have to be stirred in, just pour it over the top. So if you think it looks like you've got enough, you can stop adding it on. As I said, you can reduce it by about a third uh, or a fourth and still end up with something that really works quite well. These, this goes in the oven, 375, for about 45 minutes. And I already have one ready for you. This is really good if you can eat it nice and warm. It should make about, if you're, if you're careful with yourself, you should come up with about, oh, nine to 10 servings. I'm using about a 10 inch casserole dish to cook this in. It doesn't have to be square, doesn't have to be oblong. You could use any kind of casserole shape that you've got. And if you really wanna make this special, a little bit of whipped cream on the top of it, or a little bit of ice cream on the side, and you have a dessert that just makes summer. For Oklahoma Gardening, this is Barbara Brown.